Hey, Gary, I got to do news, and then we're going to interview Pete Townsend. He's going to do two songs for us in honor of our uh, worldwide uh, uh, free Internet giveaway here. I can't here. wait. Yeah. Anything you want to know about Pete, Artie? Well, like I say, I'm a fan. I have read up a lot on him, but... Uh, What's the thing you always want to know about Pete Townsend of The Who? Uh, you know, honestly, uh, his relationship with Keith Moon... Who, who was he the closest to of the three guys? Closest friends? I'd like to know that. Honestly. Well, you know, I was looking at the notes last night, and it really sounds like he and Roger... Don't get all. He hates Rod. Well, that's. I'd like to ask that. I'd like to know if Keith Moon was his closest friend in uh -huh. the band because it seemed like. Yeah, Ant Whistle, he didn't care about at all. And then, I mean, there's a million things. It's, I'd like to get into, yeah, how deep uh, he got into heroin at one point because I read he had to get blood transfusion. All those rumors when I was a kid, they had to get their blood changed. And, and supposedly he was treated by the same doctor who allegedly cured Eric Clapton. Right. With some machine, right? Didn't the guy have a machine? They had a machine. A that let shock you, machine or something? Well, it let you sleep through the withdrawal. Really? You I'd like to hear about it. that. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the, the child pornography stuff. Yeah, like whatever happened with that. I think he's done you know, with that. I obviously, think, uh, I'd like to ask about that. I thought that might be a little sensitive. And, and the other thing that's interesting about him is he, you know, he, he says he has tinnitus, but he's almost deaf. And he says the way he got that way was... You know those things? It's called a Rockman. You plug it into your guitar and you put headphones yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. He says he would get drunk and turn it up so loud because the drunker you get, the louder you have to turn it. He said he almost went deaf see, from doing that. Now, I heard something different, which is, a, so you talk about, see, there's a mountain of shit I'd like to know. They did a Smothers Brothers, a Smothers Brothers appearance. Right. They sang My Generation. It actually opens up the movie The Kids Are All That's right. right. And Keith Moon had all these explosives in his, in his drum kit, and he had, they had more in there than he thought. And when he hit the explosive, Townsend was standing right next to it. It blows out his ear. Mm -hmm. And you can see in the video, he's like all fucked up a little bit. And I, I heard that's what he got it from. See, he, he got tinnitus maybe from that, but he said he was going deaf from uh, drinking and loud headphones. I got to tell you something. I really worry, because I wear my headphones really hot in right. here to do the radio show. I just have to. It's the way I work, and it's the way I feel funny. But the, you know, I worry that I'm going to lose my hearing because I've been wearing headphones for 20-something years every day for five hours. Well, i got to tell you, you can I pretty much be guaranteed. There was an no. article in the paper the other day about um, how much um, hearing loss people suffer from, you know, using those little headphones with their iPods. Yeah. And they're talking about three hours a day of listening to it at a very loud volume. You make that every day. I know. Yeah. Sure. I That's why I'm announcing. Every day. I really do have to quit the business at the yeah. end of this contract. <laughs> I want whatever hearing I have, I want to say. I got to say, I worry about you yeah. and have for years because you, you put them at a level that's. I can't believe it doesn't uh, hurt. And I, I don't even realize it, you know? I'm, I'm just doing the show and trying to hear what's going on. And if I make them low, I, I kind of feel like I'm not in the show. And they say you definitely are going to lose your hearing. Oh, I want to quit right now. That You see, that scares the <laughs> shit out of me. I like them up high, too. I feel yeah. the same exact way. Like, it's almost like you're not in the conversation. Like, I have mine well, well past the mid thing. Yeah, see, I, I, mine are right me below too. mid. I never yeah. put them on that loud. Yeah, I don't keep mine very loud. And by the way... Either. I was on a subway the other day, you know, the thing is Robert talking about people with the iPods. This was so weird. There was a woman, probably like 40 years old, and she was sitting on the subway, and she had her iPod on, and she had her eyes closed, and then all of a sudden her lips started moving, and then all of a sudden she started singing, <laughs> like, really loud, and it was Peace of My Heart by Janis Joplin. Oh, my God. And she didn't look, and she was singing so loud. I don't think she knew she was singing that loud. You think she forgot? Yeah, it was really creepy. We oh, all looked at each other, great. just we were afraid of her. Yeah, and I don't want to lose my hearing. I mean, radio is everything to me, you know, and... Well, That'd be like Jenna Jameson losing her vagina. Well, oh. by that time, they'll probably have, like, stem cells to regrow your ears. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> See, when I uh, first started working at NBC, and I worked as a traffic reporter on Imus' show, he was having hearing problems. I remember so that. So they started going through this whole thing, and one of the things they did was they put a speaker that was on when you were on the air, but not right up to your ears. But it was really weird. It's almost like, you know, when you, like if you go see Letterman, there's a speaker. I know, he couldn't do it. But he couldn't do it, and he went back to the headphones. Yeah, he didn't care. He was like, hey, i got to keep yeah, doing my can, show. You can only do it the way you do it. Yeah, all right. So, Pete Townsend, anything else? Well, the latest thing was, you know, like he got off of the child porn rap, even though he had been downloading child pornography onto his computer. He claimed it was research, which unfortunately seems to be a claim a lot of pedophiles. Right. right. <laughs> but then he wrote a, a short story or something on the Internet about 
couple of 16 year olds having sex right. hmm. and that was right after the child porn thing so that didn't look good yeah and he's admitted i think i saw in the notes he's admitted in his life that he may have had sexual encounters with men yeah that he had a couple of sexual encounters with men uh, another guy says he had sex with him but he doesn't remember it well uh, he also came out years ago and said he was a woman trapped a trapped right. in a man's body right, <laughs> right. My, my buddy mike who i grew I up i know with. this i know this a little bit about this guy's personal <laughs> life he ain't into guys trust no, me i'm sure he's way into Broads. But when he made that announcement, oh, you don't know. Yeah. He could be into both. <laughs> I don't think so. When he made that announcement Just about the woman you saw thing, him going after Beth doesn't mean he doesn't right. go after a good No, not guy. even Beth. It was like, well, like, like he, he's just. He's way into chicks. And already, sure, when, yeah. he, when he made the announcement that he was a man trapped in a woman's body, I think that was around the time he did Rough Boys, which right. is that whole song, you know, Rough Boys, I want to bite and kiss you and kick you. Well, yeah, mm. and, and my buddy Mike, who was a huge Who fan, he worked in a machine shop. I was working with him for a while. When he announced that, I walked into work, and he was all depressed. <laughs> and I said, what's the matter? And he goes, Pete says he's a chick. <laughs> <laughs> The other, the I've other, read a million interviews about that, and he and he's explained that a million times. Right. He says he's in touch with his feminine side, but he right. no check. But he also says that he was abused as a child. Oh yeah, we yeah. could ask him about that. And the other interesting thing, Howard, is his girlfriend's going to be with him. She's some sort of famous podcaster, but she also co-wrote the new Who song. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yoko. <laughs> no. And Pete Townsend will be joining us in a couple of minutes, which I'm excited about. There he is. There's so many screwed up things that have gone on since we're here at Satellite. I mean, there's been just open attacks on me from the radio industry, the National Association of Broadcasters, and, uh, I mean, you know, one thing after another. There was even a reporter in the New York Post who wrote things about, what? i, I got to make an announcement. All right, right Gary says he has an important announcement. Important announcement. Okay, so at 10 o'clock, we will not be interviewing Pete Townsend. Why? Why? Because, and I'm going to just, I'm going to be really upfront about this. He was sitting in the studio, he was in London, sitting in a studio. Yeah. And um, he was not happy with the stuff that he heard, mm. so he laughed. Okay, oh. but, but I knew it. I knew he'd no, but, never make it through but, an interview. And I'll tell you the, the other thing. What do you mean? What did he hear? I, what did we do? I think everything we talked about was okay, but I think when we talked uh, about the um, child molest, the child molest, yeah. I think like that's still oh. an ongoing loss. But see, nobody told us not to talk about it. I would have said, "Hey, we can't talk about Why? that because it's an ongoing thing." Like we're not looking to fuck with the guy. So Roger's there now, who we love, Roger Daltrey, and yeah. we didn't think Roger was coming. Roger was a surprise to come with Pete. So Roger's there now, and he was a little upset, like, why would you bring that up? But again, we're not looking to go. If somebody said, don't go down that road, we wouldn't go down that road. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have even remembered to bring that up. I just was reading the notes last night. It was in the notes. So that we're not going to talk about. Do your rap for a little bit. Oh, and, and, but, but here's the best oh, part. Though. I wish Pete would be on. But there, there's something really cool, too. Roger's there, and uh, Pete left, but Pete's girlfriend didn't leave. <laughs> always like the guy. Oh, can Pete's girlfriend oh, play can pinball she, wizard? Can we, can we just go right to that now? Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah but I, they walk out? Come on, go, uh, try to get him back. Tell him to get the greatest Pete. band I mean, ever. Like, no, no, he's like, he, like, by the time I got word... Like the wheels he was were spinning. Gone. Wow! Oh, for sure. But he, he doesn't even know. I mean, he doesn't remember that I became speechless just standing in his yeah. presence. I mean, hey. yeah, look, I am we so enamored and in love. And I love in the whole. I love him, and he was like mean to me, and yeah, I love him, and, yeah. and and I, you know, it's just what uh, you guys fucked me up. Who? Gary, you? I didn't. I told you. We fucked. Already you brought up. it up. I did not no, bring I up. I brought the, it uh, up. Oh shit! <laughs> Deflect. <laughs> Let me see if I get Roger. Yeah, go, on. go pick on the new kid, Gar. I brought it up, but I brought oh. it up to see if that was something we could talk about. You, <laughs> at that moment, was the moment to say we're not going to talk about that. Uh, it's all right. Who cares? <laughs> I know. I know. I, look, I knew he wouldn't make it through, and he wouldn't have made it through the regular interview if we didn't bring that up. He's a real testy guy. Give me, give me a couple minutes. We're, we're, we're not even positive Roger's still there at this point. But Roger I think, might have. But we think he is because he was upset too. But again, like, oh, like we've man. talked to Roger about it before. Like he's a good friend. Of, I consider Roger. There's good so much to talk to Pete about it. We don't even have to talk about that. Right. There's so much to ask him. When when Roger was in here, yeah, you briefly brought that up, and he <laughs> he handled it in a very classy way, Roger. Yeah. Just that you know, sort of brushed it over. And and he like vehemently defends him, and it's fine. It's just yeah. like it's you know, it's interesting. But I, I don't know. Ah, fuck. Like JD. I, I, the Let other me talk day to when Roger, we were I'll talking about it, it, I said, we're actually going to get to interview Pete because I knew that would be a problem. This is a huge disappointment for me. I, it I, is. I, that's how much I love the Who. I mean, that's like, oh I wasn't Pete going to do a song? He He's going to do two songs. Song. Pinball was Roger might do, be fooled again. See, it was going to be, Pete was going to do the two songs alone because Roger wasn't going to be able to make it, but then we found out late yesterday that Roger might come down, and he did, in fact, get there. So then it was going to be Pete. Put somebody on. Let me see some. Put somebody on. Right, right, I don't know if anybody. Is anybody there? Roger, you there? 
Yes, I'm here. Oh, well. Roger, uh, what happened? I think right. Roger's mad at you. Roger, don't be. What did I do? We were talking about what we well, might Howard, talk about. I didn't want to. Yeah. Howard, you know, how often do you keep want to go and sniff in your dirty underpants? It feels like, to us, it feels like that. I hear the guy, you. The guy, the guy was found not guilty of anything, completely clear, I agree. I wasn't and, even going to bring and, it up. But you keep bringing this shit up. It's Roger. Like, no, Roger, well, listen to me. Well, why even bring it up, Howard? I wasn't going to bring it up. But you did on the air. No, Robin and, and Gary were talking to me about things people wanted to know about. And, and, and I wasn't doing the interview at that point. I didn't know what was going on. Everyone was talking about all the things we know about Pete. And, and it was brought up as one of a million things to talk about. But I would, you know, man, I would have handled, he would have had a great interview with me. Yeah, but you know what? You called me fucking Yoko as well. We were kidding around. <laughs> it's a, it's a it, humor Howard. show. No, really in the show. <laughs> oh, That's a joke. Sure. That's Roger, a joke. you know me, man. I've interviewed you. Have I ever given you a bad interview? Yeah, but these, these these people take themselves too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm telling you, he wouldn't have gotten through any interview. No, 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 no. He would have. I no, would have asked. Wouldn't have. You, you, Howard, can you imagine you're accused of this stuff? I would be and livid. You have, and then you're found not guilty. You've had to defend yourself through this stuff. Roger, I agree. When you're accused of stuff, it Roger, to defend yourself, I would have so, stuck up. The, I would have stuck the, up the for Pete. Are so deep on the man, um, and it's it's just tragic because he's got so much to offer. Can I tell you something, Roger? Listen to me. I would have stuck up for the guy. Yesterday in the newspaper, they wrote a thing that supposedly I said to a woman at an event. I was absolutely livid. I never said it. Had nothing. I was there with my girlfriend. Had nothing to do with me. And I would have said to Pete, if it even did come up, that, you know, yeah, of course he was cleared of it, and he's explained it a million times, and we'll move on. Why didn't you guys say, don't bring it up? We would never have brought it up. <laughs> Well, that would take management, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, you don't have any of that anymore? Roger, I feel really bad. I was so anxious to interview Pete, and I had so many good... I have so many questions to ask you guys about your career and about your lives. And Well, you know... Quite uh, frankly, the most interesting stuff to me in the notes was the stuff that was said about Roger. Yeah, I mean, Pete says such shit about you, Roger. I know. I know. You know what it is with him? I'm going to tell you. My this eyes water, Howard. <laughs> and Roger, it bounces off, Roger. Right. You could care he, less. I can't believe... But... By the same token, I've been reading some pretty crazy things about Roger lately. What did you read? Weren't uh -oh. you yelling at the audience at yeah. some concert? <laughs> I was. They, they, uh, well, you know, um, I've become allergic to pot, which is dreadful. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, and um, they, there's a few people having a, you know, a few puffs in the front row, and of course, it's 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 given me severe allergy. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I would love to be joining in with you guys, but at the moment I really can't. And you might just stop the show. <laughs> Roger, how can we get Pete back on with you? Where um, is he? Where do you go? Uh, I'm doing everything I can to. Please tell him we'll have a great interview. I feel really bad about this. I'm we were really honored. I'm, I'm doing everything I can, but uh, I was very honored to have him know, here. It's just, uh, it, 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 it's just. It was too much. Tell him you'll say, you they'll send no that one, uh, meddling girl what, out of the room. <laughs> Just one, one, one thing you've got to understand. Well, fire Rob and tell him. <laughs> no, 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 you guys know broads. I'll just leave. Well, you know well, broads, well, right? Fuck up for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen. Is it, you've got it, no matter how much people tell you they understand what you've been through, you never will. Because it's the it's the worst feeling in the world to be accused of stuff like that and be totally innocent. It is it's dreadful. It must. It was terrible for him. I, know. I felt felt it because I was very close to him. Of course. And you know, it, it, and and even though he says he hardly knows, and I was you? answering the questions. So in a lot of ways, it felt. You know, I've been accused of it, so I know what it felt like. And why does Pete? But, imagine. Let me ask you. As long as I got you on here. Why, why does Pete go around bad-mouthing, do you think, you? Do you think that it's hard for him that he I can't, can't... Listen, Howard, it's a game. It's, it's, it's musical wrestling. It's a game. You know this business. Oh, come on, though. You guys never it's hang the, out together. It's World Series wrestling. Come on. <laughs> no, it's, this is a little deeper than that. Is he... No, it's not. Is it upsetting well, to him that he can't sing his songs as well as you sing them? Well, is it hard it, for a guy to deal I with? I wish I don't play, can't play guitar. Like, I know. Him, but it doesn't upset me. I'm sure it doesn't uh, upset him. Then why not but he you says you're just yeah, a but, business partner. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't socialize with you. He well, says, I can't, you know, it doesn't bother me. We, we used to hang around a lot as, as young, young people and we've grown apart. Our well, he says you were a big parts. bully. No, I said Roger was a big bully. Well, somebody's. Who is that? I actually wasn't. That, this is Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. 
Hi, Howard. How are you, your Pete's girlfriend? Tell Pete I am very sorry. We would have had a great interview with him. I really wish he'd reconsider this. We uh, we adore him, and we uh, would love to have him on the air with Rachel, us. Rachel, can you get him back? I might call him. How, call him up and tell him that it will be fine. Call him on the telly. Tell him not to be afraid of us. We're we're big assholes. He knows that, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> well, he should have been expecting it then. Rachel, well, uh, how long you been going out with Pete? He, no, she's gone to phone him. Oh, good. Oh, okay, good. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we can repair <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, I swear to you, nobody said that was an off limits topic. Well, then that's why I said anything it's just that you know it, it just wouldn't it's take too much integrity. we wouldn't want him it would not take to... a bit of integrity robin you know well, <laughs> what 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 do you say yeah. you old grouch that's what they're saying about is there a yeah. new <laughs> there you go <laughs> hey hey roger is there another guy around there with a British accent that we can say is Pete? Um, would you help me out with that? Would you just get a guy on there and pretend to be Pete Townsend? Well, yeah, really, I really don't even like care if it's... Out. He's that's not going to play guitar like him, that's for sure. I know you guys were going to do a song now. You can't, you can't even do it, huh? Well, no, we can't. No. You can't do it a cappella? Um, not really. <laughs> I think we got a better chance at interviewing Keith Moon. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I think you might be right there, but... Um, How are you doing, doing man? Those, how's those kids of yours? We, they're really good. My, they're fantastic. Uh, got a um, uh, another one married in the summer, so that's really good. <laughs> Roger's a great guy. You know, <laughs> you married him off. <laughs> Roger was smart. He told these kids right off the bat, "You're not getting any who money." That's right. He said, "You go out and work for a living." Right? No, yeah. I think that's all changed now. Uh, now, what well, is now, now there's no employment for the working classes. But so you have to give them money. Are you here. supporting those kids still? Well, uh, yeah, you have to. Oh, for Christ's sake. I wanted man. to ask a question because also in the notes that I was given, it said that Pete lost all of his money at one point. Yeah, that's why Roger laughs at him. <laughs> that's why he left that's the studio. That's probably why he doesn't like me, he didn't lose, but he didn't lose it to me. Why do all rock stars always go through losing their money? It's, don't, doesn't everybody? You, you didn't go through that. You're very frugal. Um, I just don't need a lot. It's not that I'm frugal. I don't need a lot. I'm not frugal at all. I just don't need a lot to survive. I so you have a lot. a lot of money? Uh, no, I give a lot away. Yeah? An awful lot away. That's not I've what I heard. Really I heard nice things, I heard you're tight with it. a buck. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> oh, really? That's what I heard. <laughs> Who told you that, Howard? <laughs> I think you did. All of a sudden we're hearing you're giving it away? And the kids are what, all you right. You mean I wouldn't give you a handout, Howard? <laughs> and, the, and the kids are all right, Townsend calls you a shepherd's bush geezer. What's that well, that's, mean? That's all right. What, what is, is that? that? What does that mean? Hey, what is a that? Geezer. A, a geezer. A it's shepherd's a, bush geezer. It's a, it's a shepherd's bush term for a a, a, a guy. <laughs> well, no, right. we'll never understand. <laughs> What's a shepherd's bush? No, you bush? won't understand our language. You know, it's it's um, it, it, we we are divided by the language. Even though we think it's English, it's not. You speak American, <laughs> we speak English. Peter said that you were a real bully in grade school and right. used to actually beat up Pete Townsend. Is that true? No, I actually don't think I ever did beat Pete up. But he does um, say in the recording But I had a session. reputation for being able to being able to look after myself. I, When's I the actually, last time you kicked a guy's ass? Oh, I have. I, I don't really like to even. It's eight, years and years and years and years ago. Probably thirty years ago. But in the recording sessions, they said you used to use that look as physical intimidation, like there would be some violence if they didn't go along with what you wanted in the recording session. So that's what? Their, that's their own paranoia. I can't speak for that, can I? <laughs> what are you I doing mean, now? You, you, where are you living you know, now? England? I can't help the way my eyes are. Where are you living? You know, <laughs> if I look at someone with an intent, they get it. You know, that's. That, but I, it's not to say I was thinking that. Yeah. Where, where are you living now? England. I live in England. Yeah. And yeah, what do you guys do? You, do you still go out on tour and stuff? Yeah, we're on they've tour been now. touring. We're right in the middle of it now. Why are you still doing it though? You got more money than God. What is it? It's just you, you just got to get out of the house. More money than God. We haven't got more money than you, Howard. You've got more money than God. <laughs> Townsend has got. He's both the music and lyrics. The actual, all those when you look at the amount that the Who have worked, we actually, when in the big league of things, when you compare what we we're worth with what real rock stars are worth, we're really poor, bro. You've that been famous. Good. I remember watching you on the Ed Sullivan Show at the it. Who. I mean, yeah but, yeah, yeah, but do you think we got paid in those days? Yeah, if the Who don't have money, then no one in rock and roll does. has money. From do you CSI, think we, Howard, do you think we got paid? Yes. In those days. I mean, no, no, okay, in the early do, days do, you got... Do you think we got paid more than a Fender guitar that we, or a Gibson guitar that was being sold? But what do you make on tour? I mean, now, I mean, just going around doing a Who tour, it's multi... We're starting to make money now. We're right. starting to make money, although 
in in real terms everybody complains about ticket prices but but um real terms we're not making uh, the the nets that we were were 20 years ago really? like, like, like i know Billy no, because the costs have gone extra extremely high i know you try and get in, get an insurance for a concert these days but but roger i know billy joel this guy's running around he's got to have over a hundred million dollars because he's buying and selling houses all the time I yeah but I he's got publishing howard well, i haven't got any publishing i'm just a singer yeah but pete does pete does. pete's got it. how can pete yeah, but i haven't got any you're you, you talk about the, these generalizations. So write a couple of these goddamn you? songs, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Put your name on a couple. Hey, put your name on a few songs. Howard, in the, la in the well, last... You know, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a great... I can write songs, but they're not the songs of significance that Pete's songs are. Why and do you think Pete has sold his uh, songs to uh, commercials, TV commercials? I figured Pete would never do something like that. And CSI um, and stuff right. like that. From CSI I think, alone. I, I think Three CSIs. Great. I think it's great. I mean, there's, the, you, you know very well that the, the, the way of getting music heard on the radio or in, in any media at all now Hard. is extremely, extremely difficult. Any way you can do it. All I know is that people will be liking the music long after they've forgotten the, the car that it's selling or the CSI or anything else. Right, right, right. And that's the fact about music. Just anything that gets your music to the public is a valid thing as long as it's, you know, not hurting. By the way, I should remind you that over here on Sirius on Channel 10, the Who Channel, we actually have that's a right. Who Channel. And if you'd like to hear more live Who performances, and um, uh, you, you definitely should tune into Channel 10. We're doing a whole Who thing over there. Are you involved with that, Roger, or you don't even care? I, I, I'm involved with it. I, uh, I'll do interviews with it, but I'm, at the moment I'm doing shows on the road, and that takes every bit of my energy. To be honest with you, you bring the wife out on the road, or you forget that she comes out, but it, she finds it very difficult. Is she a pain in the ass, or uh, it's, it's no, 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 no. She's fabulous. She's you know, good. But it's it, but it's just I live a different life. I don't get up until you know the the, the very late morning. She gets re up really early. I want to go to bed, bed at four in the morning. She wants to go to bed at eleven. You know? I was playing drums on the. <laughs> Tour. Um, we got Zach Starkey. Ringo's, Ringo's kid? kid, yeah. Yeah. Is he any good? Is he any good? <laughs> I don't know. What is he? Pope a Catholic. He's good. Yeah, he's great. And he's who's fantastic. playing bass? Uh, Pino Palladino. Penis? <laughs> Pino. Penis Palladino? P Penis Pino. Palladino. <laughs> oh, Pino Palladino. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're not paying him. Yeah, oh. <laughs> the, the, I, have we talked to him? Uh, yeah, I guess we have Pino talked Paladino? to not not Pino. We've talked to Roger since uh, Endwhistle died. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah everybody's dropping off. I had Endwhistle on the show. Yeah, yeah, I met him a bunch of years ago. What is it, Gary? Well, you sort of brought up the CSI uh, thing, but I was wondering if even though Roger didn't write those songs from the CSI, the three CSI theme songs and the commercials. Do you still see money from that just as a performance? No. I get, I get, I get a share of the, the record, uh, the, the licensing of mm. the record, yeah. Mm. Well, you, you still got a, what, you got a salmon farm up there or something? Or is oh, that's the guy, definitely the guy from Jethro Tull. I've been out of that for four years. Yeah, what are you years. doing now? What do you got? Where are you living? I still live on the, on, on the farm that I've lived on for 40 years and, um, uh, yeah, I'm just living in London and there, really. See how nice this interview is? I mean, I can't believe, okay. where is Pete? Get the fuck back in here. Does Roger know Paul McCartney? That poor, I do. I've met Paul McCartney. That I don't poor know bastard. Yeah, no. what is going on there? What do you huh? make of that situation? How did he not get a prenuptial agreement, this guy? It, it wouldn't count in our country. Sure it would. You could no, do that. No, they, they don't count in our country. In our law. We've got different law to you. No kidding. A poor yeah, bastard yeah. might have to give up half of $1.6 billion. No, no, wait. No. I, no, no, no. She hasn't got a leg to stand on. <laughs> oh. I no, I heard <laughs> yesterday that it's only half of what he made during their marriage. Oh, thank God. I mean, that's just killer, isn't it? And he's um, saying he made nothing. <laughs> Well, the way, way uh, you know, the way, the, 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 unfortunately, the, 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 the salacious tabloids that we've got here are dealing with the both of them. I think she'll be lucky to get even what she's off, he's, she's been offered by him. Yeah. The way it's looking at the moment, but, you know, who knows, once they start throwing mud around, mm. there's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of dirty people. Ch by who's, the the who's the most famous chick you ever banged? <laughs> come on, man. Her name stay in my right memory, not mind. yours, I'm afraid, Howard. No, come on, man. Who's no, the most... Sure. Stay in my memory, not yours. <laughs> so don't go there. Yeah. Ann Margaret, when you filmed Tommy. That's Ann what I was... Uh, that's exactly no. the one that jumped out when to you, me. When you banged Ann Margaret, how was that? <laughs> oh. Did I'm you sure bang it was fantastic. Or Tina Turner? <laughs> no, no. He had... He, when, you, when, you, when you were doing uh, Tommy... Yeah. Ann Margaret, man. That was some... Yeah, catch. but can you imagine having her as your mother? <laughs> now, she was my mother in the film. It I don't care what she was. <laughs> I would have banged her silly. Well, I was a method actor. I didn't go near her. That's a sexy woman, huh? 
Yeah, she love lovely lady, great lady. Who's the hottest chick you ever met beside your wife? Ah, oh, don't look out. Come on, yeah. don't yeah, you're just tell us who you think is attractive. You know who's attractive. Just tell us who's attractive. Not, I, nah, I'm not saying you banged her. Oh, Come on, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying anything. Come on. You gotta say it's an interview. Long silence here, Howard. I'm not going there, brother. You gotta say it's an interview. You have to answer what I. It's boring. This is boring. It's not boring. It's boring because you're not answering. He would be singing if he had stayed. Did you ever bang Lady Di? Who would you like me to say? We'd have you do his song, but Pete's not there. Well, I don't know. Is Roger? I heard a rumor that Roger was going to sing instead of Pete. So I, I'm not putting him on a spot. Is there going to be a performance of any kind this morning? He doesn't have a guitar. I'm not doing a cappella. Oh, there's no guitar. I'll sing with you. Fred, play the guitar. What song you want to do? Fred will play for you. This is going well. This will be fine. Fred's as Let's good as Pete. This, Fred. Quite as frankly, as Pete. Fred's as good as Pete. Don't even worry about Send it. Send Yoko to the store to buy a guitar. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> what well, happened to that guitar. Rachel? She can't get him back? All right, what do you want to play? What do you want to sing? You won't get fooled again. Do, want to do no, won't I'm get... not playing that. That's, no, I don't want to do an old song. I was going to do something new. <laughs> well, we don't <laughs> have we the don't new song. We don't know the new song. Well, then, you know. No, you're going to do an old song right now with Fred. Now stop Pardon? it. Wow, one stupid song. Give us a couple of notes. Right. What songs do you know? I don't know. He knows Won't, won't Get, get Fooled, fooled again. again. Just start singing I'll play along with it. You probably oh, don't even geez. remember it. I, uh, you know, I'd rather play it myself. I haven't got a guitar. You know what my favorite whose song is? Uh, Love Rain Over Me. I'm not singing that. But it's Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> get to work. Now I see why you have no money. How do these guys go on tour? I don't want to sing Nobody wants to sing. Or do you sing it? The same as the old bar. Come on, dude. Keep playing it. Come on. I'll send you 20 bucks. You're crazy, Howard. Fighting in the street. And I'm sitting here beating my meat. Beating Townsend walked out on my interview today. Oi, Faye. That Roger won't sing a song. I need to hear some who music in the show. Come on! Pete walked out, now I'm screwed forever. Pete walked out, and now we can't do the song. Pete is gone, and Roger won't sing. And I have a world premiere. And my show really sucks today. And Roger's gotta sing anyway. You see how easy it is? That was fantastic. Carry on. Do something. <laughs> we'll do the tour. Give me a song you like to sing. What I'm do you on like? A break from sing, a tour. I've sing got, some. I've had four days off. Horse shit. Like, you know, I go there sing. sing something. Come on, man. What do you like? What's your favorite who song? I don't know. I, if I had a guitar, I would play my. We got a guitar. guitar. Who the, the fuck are you? Bloody sing. Who the fuck are you? Can you hear <laughs> Fred? Fred, Fred, Fred? <laughs> you can hear Fred. Okay, go. You couldn't play. Who are you? Who are you? Over the background part, come on. Who are you? Come on, tell me what chord it is. We don't know what chord I really want to do. Who are you? Come on. Ready? Now, Roger, go. He's playing the wrong chord. Hold it. I woke up in a Soho door with a police. Knew it's not my name. It's not he said, you can't go sleep at home Wait, I came here, Roger. Hold on. You're such a great so job of doing this. You carry on. But no. you're not playing the right chords, so what? it would help if I had the right music. You don't want to piss me off now. <laughs> you don't want to piss me off. If what? I had a guitar, I would play to you and I would sing you a song, but I haven't no, got a no, bloody no, guitar I'll, here. Hold on a second. I Roger, can't afford one. Roger, during, <laughs> before Pete left, I heard somebody playing a guitar. When Pete left, did he take the guitar with him? Yes. Wow. Not, there's not one guitar he in London. Took his ball and went home. <laughs> he took the guitar. Recording studio. Hey, what happened the to Rachel? Has gone. Where's Rachel? The guitar has left the building. <laughs> Roger, where is Rachel? I don't know. She's gone as well now. I think. Shit. Damn. Boy, I feel awful. Do me a favor. Uh, write down this uh, and tell this to Pete. Uh, Roger, write this down. <laughs> Do you have a pen? The, no, the, the pen's gone as well. <laughs> <laughs> write, write down. Uh, listen, Pete. I'm very, very sorry. We were going to do a wonderful interview, and uh, I feel awful about this. And uh, and Roger will vouch for me that I'm a good guy, 
and uh, America's top Jew. And Write Roger that had a good time. That's right. <laughs> and say Roger had a good time. Would you do that? Uh, uh, someone will. I'm not writing it down, but somebody <laughs> will. You didn't write that down? <laughs> I'm sure they recorded it. You won't it. sing They'll... and you won't write down what I say? <laughs> I didn't say I wouldn't sing. I said I'm not singing to someone who doesn't play the right chords on the other end of a telephone. Read that, read that back to me, what I just said. <laughs> um, read back what I just said so I know you got it right. Uh, Is anybody Fred, taking it down? I haven't got a pen here. Fred, why don't you know how to play these songs? I, I got news for you. He's bullshitting you. Those are the songs, Dalton. There's no thirds. There's no thirds There's in no it. There's no thirds. There's no thirds. Just sing, dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> no play it no with no third in it. No one. There's no thirds. You're busting my balls. What is third? T H I R D. Oh, stop it. We what don't do even do? know what third is. Do you know how to play <laughs> those songs? Goddamn English. Are you playing I those was, I was playing the song. He's just being a dick about it right now. He doesn't want to sing. There's no thirds in it. He doesn't want to sing. It's not in the major key. Could you do it I'm looking the at the tablet. You're off the internet. It says E. <laughs> it's not it's E with no. Dude. We'll take the third out of it. Take the third. We out have of the internet here. Just sing over the third. <laughs> Fred, just play it without the turds. <laughs> or thirds or whatever they are. Someone's the being turds. a turd here, and it ain't me. All right. Well, let me tell you something. How about Roger? the singing uh, M and M front? It's put on. <laughs> I don't See, we I... were doing that the other day. We were so excited. <laughs> Roger, what is your best guess on my relationship with Pete now? Is it ruined forever? <laughs> <laughs> Will I never get the uh, Pete Towns and Roger Daltrey together interview? Really? Is it really ruined? Probably not. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? May I write it? Give everyone his address so we can write him a note. <laughs> I'll get someone to send it to you. Please. I really do feel awful about it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love you. I've had you on the show many times, and I've, I've been nothing but a fantastic interviewer with you. And Pete would have liked the interview, trust me. We would not have gotten into that other shit. All he would have had to say is, I don't want to talk about it. It's he, like, you know, stabbing someone in his, Oh, he's a bit of a baby. He can deflect. Is it better, Howard? You know, that's the trouble. Gary, send Pete Townsend an autographed picture of me and write on it, uh, Pete, I'm so sorry, Howard Stern. Can we interview... We'll take care of that. Thank you. Can we interview Zach Starkey and Pino Palladino? Yeah. <laughs> I wish they were here. We'd yeah. play you a song. Well, that would have been great. Damn. Well, I wish, but I, 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 like I say, I haven't even got a guitar here, Howard, as I play your song, but I haven't got one here. It's okay, brother. Uh, it's all right. I mean, I just feel bad. I know you woke up early and you, you, you made yourself up. And you weren't Actually, even going to. Actually, they didn't have to wake up that early. They're in England. Oh, that's right. I forgot about it. Well, I did have to wake up early. I've just only just got back from LA and I don't want to make that, our time change and three that you days walked, into it. The fact that you walked over there and you, you know, I mean, it. Walked it, over. I drove two hours to get to your bloody show. <laughs> I know. Don't I give me feel that awful. Crap. Where did Pete By come the way, from? the first first new Who album in 24 years. I don't know if people realize this. The Who have actually gone into a studio and recorded a new album. Unlike uh, a lot of bands who just rest on their laurels, these guys wrote a new one. It's called Endless Wire. It's in stores October 31st. All right, and, secretly, um, Roger, tell us, how is the new song that the girlfriend wrote? Yeah, be honest. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great song. Have you not heard it? No. I haven't heard it. It's a great song. Well, sing it. <laughs> I can't sing it on without, you know, you, you listen to the song, for Christ's sake. You, Townsend, such a baby. He could have he could have stayed there and really? dealt with us. He's, 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 he's childish. This was really mean to you. This was really a slap in no, your face. No, it's not. It's not childish. It, it I, is. And I totally understand. Oh no, I don't think it is. Did he say something? What did he say? It's, just it's unfortunate. Before. Pardon. What did he say pretend you're Pete Townsend. Out. Tell us everything he said. When I we... haven't seen him. He's no. already left by the time I got here. Oh, oh you're really? kidding. You didn't even get no. to see the tantrum. No, no. no. Oh yeah. shit. Oh. Come on, Roger. All together. Out here in the fields. <laughs> <laughs> I fought for my meal. You fuck for your meals? Fuck for his meals. What? You fuck for your meals. I'm singing this, I'm singing this right? without yeah. turds. <laughs> I'm singing it without turds. <laughs> Go on, on Go ahead. Try it the best you can, Roger. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, just a, uh, will you shut up if I sing one verse yes, of this? Yes, we will shut up. <laughs> All right, go on then. Come on, I want to hear some banging about in the background. That's better. Forgiven, yeah, 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 yeah. When 
There you go. Now it's sounding good. Oh, you this is the part. This is the part. <laughs> what? Uh, you did good. You're, not, you're, you're adding bars to it. <laughs> nice. That was good. Thank you. Don't cry. <laughs> don't, don't. Don't wait your eyes. It's a bit high, isn't it, for you girls? It's only, only teenage wasteland. to see you guys how long ago a couple of years ago came to one of your concerts i saw him at the garden I've seen two him years a ago lot. giant stadium i thought roger was gonna uh like go down on stage and go i just want to thank how it's done for showing up here but he didn't <laughs> hey roger i saw you at the garden two years ago and you were doing the mic twirl and you you dropped it and it hit did it hit somebody in the front row no it managed to miss everybody but oh. I, I, I i just had a shoulder operation a yeah. su surgery on my shoulder and uh it wasn't quite ready for that <laughs> would have been cool and, if you knocked someone out yeah because roger does that great thing where i mean he gets it right, going yeah. and i was in the upper deck of course but it it does <laughs> it slipped and we thought that had to kill somebody but it, i know it's, it's done my confidence a bit in swinging that and i'm not as confident as i used to be do with you it. swing it still on stage occasionally not as much as I used to. I can't. I physically can't do it. You got to see the shit he used to do with it. He would like, you know. Oh yeah, he was twirling. I can with still do like it, but it, I, it, you know, it, it fits in a place and it works in one place. But um, I I use it uh, in a better way now because it it's it looks great and it's a great visual, but it just makes the music a, a bit a bit of a circus. You still doing all that acting bullshit, or you you fed up with that? <laughs> it's not bullshit. It's just a job like your bullshit job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all bullshit. But I mean, yeah, you know, singing is where it's at, man. I agree, but, um, yeah, what's you better can't than tour every day of your life, Howard. Uh, I don't know. What I don't is know. better than being a rock star, Roger? You, no. You've seen all sides. There's nothing better. My than life is just uh, my life. Uh, it was being a sheet metal worker was great. I had a great <laughs> time in the factory. I really did. I had a fantastic time. Being a rock star is great <laughs> until until your guitar yeah, player bad I mouths did, you. Oh. You know that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, shepherd's Bush Geezer. You call you Shepherd's yeah. Bush Geezer. <laughs> Crazy, all right. <laughs> it's all right. Do you get a thick skin when you're in a rock band? Yeah, you're a good man. I tell you, nothing nothing sways you. I mean, Pete, you know, I, Pete's being a little sensitive. He, I, I understand why he's upset. And, and don't get me wrong, I apologize. But I think Pete is a little sensitive. Yeah, but he, you know, he could have come on here. He would have had a great time. I mean it. I mean it. Is he capable of having a great time? No, he's yes. miserable. <laughs> yes, no, no. How's the new he, girlfriend? He, is she hot? He's, she's great. She's a she, she's she's a she's a, been such a support to him and. You know, you know, it's going to be hard for any girlfriend of a Pete, bloke like Pete Townsend. Think he'll marry this one? to get poked fun at and all those things. And, but ultimately, they love each other and they, they support each other. And her support for him has been, you know, 120%. What, what more can you ask for in a girlfriend? What, who have we, anybody, How old you, is she? me, anybody, to how make old any is this broad? comment about his girlfriend? Oh, well, please. I we don't, don't know, know how her from a whole... 30, 30, Two, thirty-two. Three? That's yeah. nice. And he's sixty. Yeah, that's the right something? math. Wow. Why not? Yeah. He's Pete Townsend. He deserves. He should it. be banging a young broad. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And believe me, so should Roger. <laughs> he's Roger Daltrey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. How, so, so you're doing a lot of the new album on tour, or you? you, you yeah. Do, so you do some yeah, new songs, been... and then you do some of the old songs. Yeah, we kind of get a good balance of it. What do you want, Pete? I mean, you can't forget your past. It's, your past is what, what's made you where you are. But um, the new songs are fantastic. He's written a great album. I got to tell you. I mean, can you imagine? Have you heard any of the new stuff? No. Already? I haven't. But the two songs, the two new songs that you put on the last, uh, the then and now thing you did, Old Red Wine and Real Good Looking Boy, were both great. I well, love both of those. Well, I think these are these are even more important. So I think he's got songs on this album of 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 the merit of who's next I well mean, i would have asked really him about it but he walked out yeah well, shit we what? Can't go i back can't now. imagine why never go back never roger go back. you you get him in line man and you get him on the show tomorrow why are they on. even playing us where he is he should just yeah. come on and do the interview that's right this is well, just terrible here so um you know how many times I downloaded your stuff for free on my iPod? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Do you hate that, Roger, that iPod thing and, like, the record business now? It just sucks for guys trying to make a living, isn't it? Everybody's getting Well, you can, you know, the, the, the ultimately, yeah, it's going to no. will kill the biz business. No. It's the same with pirate films and pirate TV 
uh, all that stuff will you gotta actually, get into that ring in the topic. end, we will be left with nothing left to watch because no one will be able to, f to afford to make anything. You gotta get into that ringtone thing. Yeah, that's where the money's at. Yeah, ringtones. <laughs> well, I haven't got any publishing, so <laughs> it doesn't do him any unless good. I use my voice. I'm yeah. stuffed on that as well. So there you go. You're a good man, and and the new album uh, is. You uh, can't take it with you, Howard. Why worry about it? I hear you. Brother. I'm, I'm surviving. Keep my head above water. What, yeah. what more do you need? Well, you, well, I you wear get... one set suit of clothes, and I eat you know three meals a day. What more do I need? Yeah. A roof over my head. What do you do? And what do you do? You fly to all these gigs, or do you take a yeah? Tour? You, yeah, have, you, you, you have to to make sure you're there. And what do you take a private jet? We have to because you can't guarantee any other form of transport getting you there on time these days. Right, right, right. And how many days? Are these are the things about touring that have changed. You can't plan on going by road and definitely making it. And who who picks um, out who gets the first choice of a seat on a private jet? You or Pete? Probably we, Pete, he, huh? Yeah. <laughs> or walk off the plane. We fight. I over want that the favorite seat. We fight seat. over that one. That's my seat, Roger. Yeah, that's it. We fight yeah. over that. Well, you're we a good man. We kind of got our own perches. I'm glad you were there today. I didn't even. At first, I heard you weren't coming, and I was bummed out. And but you know, Pete was coming. Now Pete walked off. But at least we got to speak to you, Roger. I'm I really was glad. coming to surprise you. I love it. <laughs> well, how really amazing glad. would that have been? You would have been singing, and he would have been playing. Yeah. 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 Well, we were trying, and, um, uh, and then there you go. And then Robin and Gary opened their mouths. Uh, then uh, I victim, surprised vi them. Victim of circumstances. <laughs> Pete got chased off by you, Robin. <laughs> Look, I was just going by the notes. I figured if it was not territory we could cover, it would have been there. Yeah. Well. All right. You doing any drugs these days, or are you just straight as, as can <laughs> no, be? No, but there's, there's trouble. I've become allergic to them. The only drug I ever did, which is, well, no, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> what a, you can't smoke pot anymore, huh? No, terrible. What do you mean allergic? God, what happens? You break out? No, no, I, um, I just get like an asthma attack. <laughs> really? Wow. I mean, yeah, it couldn't be worse. Jeez. You love pot too, right? I used to like it, yeah. I used to like it was the only thing that kind of put me to sleep after a show, you know, took you down from the, the, the adrenaline. Did but, you ever uh, smoke weed with Jimi Hendrix or anybody like that? Yeah. You did? Yeah, back in those days, yeah. Hendrix, man, that was the greatest, right? But I was lucky, I, and I don't really recommend that anybody do it because I'm not so sure it's a good thing anymore. What, pot? Yeah, I'm not I'm not so sure how the the new kinds of grass they got out there. There's an awful lot of stuff going. Oh, it's awful! Is, I, yeah. I I can't do it. You know the, the the kind of pot that we used to smoke was you you smoke, you know giant joints, and you would just about get high. Right now you have one puff of this new stuff. Well, the I was, I know, last one I ever had was about three years ago. I mean, one puff and you're on your back. I know. I the can't do it. Same. I don't chronic. do any drugs. I can't handle it. No, what about eating it in a brownie? Wouldn't that be better? It's fattening, though. Oh. <laughs> when you when you uh, banged Aunt Margaret, did you smoke weed with her? <laughs> <laughs> did Aunt smoke weed? I don't know. Yeah, sure. With, 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 with Roger. You didn't hear about it? <laughs> Someone was banging her on that set, and it wasn't Oliver Reed. <laughs> That's right. Well, listen, Roger, I love you, and uh, I'm sorry about the whole incident with Pete. I really did well, not intend for that life, to happen. Well, you know, that's life, isn't it? You got, have to roll with it. Right. I'm <laughs> Would sorry. Would you apologize for Please. me? I really didn't mean to. Uh, yeah, tell him we, what, you know us. We, we, our, bar, our bark is worse than our bite. We would have had a really good interview, and it would have been fun to finally talk with Pete after all these years. I'm, yeah, but I, he, ha he has got... You know, it, I understand. Has, you do have to understand he's not even allowed to answer you on it. I hear all you. Right, I hear right. you. We didn't know. We didn't know, and uh, we thought so it was... So it's kind of a... You know, and it's, and it's tragic that this has ended up. But anyway, there we are. Please uh, <laughs> play him. I'm going to send you a copy. Just play it for him, and uh, that way he can hear my... Uh, uh, yeah, we will play it for him. I'm right. sure he's listening. I'm sure he wants to hear this. <laughs> uh, all right, and by he, the way... He's definitely tuning into the Internet today. And uh, by the way, uh, you know, The Who are uh, out on tour. The Who have a channel here on Sirius on Channel 10. The Who have a new album in 24 years. They haven't made an album, and now they finally have made an album called The Endless Way. Everyone's saying, where's The Who album? Here it is. Now you got a chance to get it. It's in stores October 31st, and uh, uh, Pete probably just wanted to go bang his girlfriend anyway. He didn't want to talk <laughs> yeah, to me. Yeah, she got lost. Where did Rachel go? That's right. Uh, Rachel booked out, too. She went to try and talk him into coming back. I would you know, love to so be a fly on the wall of that conversation. Roger, believe it Believe it or not, with us, this happens all the time. People just get freaked <laughs> out by just us. just walk out on it. Yeah, we didn't mean anything. We know, we know, you know Pete's, uh, Pete's a good dude. All right, man. I saw them in 82 at the Garden. They were amazing. Two years ago, they were amazing. And I'm I saw them at Radio well, City I'll tell you, Musical. I'm, and I'm not just saying, it, I really do believe this is the best work we've done since possibly the days when Keith was in the band. What's well, the best Who album ever, in your opinion? Oh, I don't like to judge that. It's, it's, that's a, that's a, uh, um, 
You know what the best so album is? I'll tell you the answer if you want to know it. If you're interested. <laughs> well, it's your best album. That's your your, your best, best album. album. Quadrophenia. Oh, this is your best album. Quadrophenia. That's your, your favorite hey, choice. Don't interrupt. Quadrophenia. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, what are you I wearing? haven't got you're a favorite. Wearing... I, I like all of them. I'm wearing a nice, um, bright, luminous thong. No, no. <laughs> Skin-high thigh leather boots. You're still in good shape? Um, relatively good. You didn't get heavy? Uh, you know who got heavy? No, I haven't got no, I'm skinny as a rail. You know who got heavy? Rod Stewart. I saw him on uh, Dancing with the Stars. His whole belly was sticking out yeah know. we've just had uh, his wife's just had a new baby i mean that'll do it that'll take that put the weight on you <laughs> can you believe this guy he's having babies at his age it's enough right go enjoy your life <laughs> busy with frightening. babies frightening <laughs> uh, is the who gonna show up on american idol hell no oh don't do that <laughs> we fire we, we we listen the only audition we ever took for emi way way back in the, in the really early days we failed we failed they said the singers shows uh, some personality, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, but the the guitarist lacks any I don't know rhythm or something ridiculous. Is that true? And the 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 drummer has no sense of the tempo. Is that really true? <laughs> Is that really true? <laughs> yeah, we failed miserably. This was for the Beatles record company EMI. You know, wow. you went and you, it was, you went this, to EMI was, was the early was, days, and they sat there yeah. and said, "Hey, do an audition, and we'll." And, and how did you get a hold of what they wrote down on the piece of paper? We we got some somehow or the other we got it. We wow. got we got the reply that they wrote back to our management. Boy, those assholes must be kicking themselves <laughs> in the head, huh? Well, this was one year after the Beatles hit in nineteen sixty three. So what's your point? The point is that there are so no experts. EMI turned us down in nineteen sixty four. Wow, what a great move that was. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no such thing as experts when it comes to the no. music business. Just people that know more and more about less and less. Imagine you're the jackass who passed on the really? hoe. You know how many millions that cost that uh, record company? I mean, yeah. my God, imagine that. <laughs> Sitting there auditioning, and you, you, it's just unreal. <laughs> All right, hey, anyway, Roger, thanks, and uh, thanks for hanging in there with us, and uh, please apologize to Pete. All right. All, right. All the best to you guys. Best to you, too. Bye, bye, Roger. Bye, bye. That's sort of a bummer that uh, that happened, mm. but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to see him in a few weeks at the Borgata in Atlantic City. I'm going yeah. down. You might get thrown. Out. You know what I'll do, Robin? I'll square. You're probably not wanted. I'll oh, square it away. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I really feel genuinely bad. I was looking forward to interviewing Pete. I, the fact that Daltrey was going to be there as a surprise oh, that would have been, been great. great. No. See, that's what happens here at Satellite. <laughs> oh wow. Bomber, you're on the air. Can you believe that, Howard? That yeah. was almost almost the greatest piece of radio ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then and I love how Robin blamed the victim afterwards. Right. <laughs> uh, you tittering tit you. Oh, I'm just kidding. How could I well, know that he was gonna walk out? Um I I'm kidding. Anyway, nice. It's nice. probably better that he walked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he would have been a terrible interview. <laughs> it would have been a bad interview. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's a good sport. He's he get... great. I don't know. I feel bad about that. Though. I feel horrible because I really wanted to hear him sing, and I didn't mean to upset him. Hmm. Oof. In fact, Pete was going to sing something too. Mm. Well, Pete was supposed to sing originally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. Mm. All right, Bomber. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and you Jeez. know who's freaking out right now is Scott Greenstein because he worked so hard oh, to arrange for this. No. Yeah. He works so hard because he's got a relationship with the Who. Well, not anymore. <laughs> and Beth knows Pete, and um, her boyfriend used to be in Tommy, right. and that's how they met, and they always talk on the phone. And the, uh, now I'm the asshole. Townsend's blog mentioned Beth. Right? Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. We're he, doing a Howard Stern show. And he was oh, excited about it. what did he say it. in the blog? That he was like, excited. Like, yeah. He was excited to uh, give my best to lovely Beth. Mm. We fucking suck. Uh, yeah, you know, I I, I feel I, real bad. I, I stayed away from going in that mm. part of the office because I'm just afraid of what right. you know because it's all going to come down on me. But I think I think it went from what I'm hearing is it went from you know utter dismay to uh, great radio. Then yeah. at the end of the day, it's great radio, and I, I think also that Pete was supposed to do something on the Who Channel. I don't think he's going to be there oh, for that no, either. We, we oh. But I think that everybody. I think that the people that run the place think that it, I mean it really was great radio. I got an email yeah. from a friend of mine that says. This is way better than the Pete would have been there, but I still would have <laughs> yeah, liked to have had him. I would have liked to have talked. And I do feel bad. We were, you know, Mike. I said like we're not looking to fuck the guy over. And if we, if Mike. somebody said, "Hey, that's off limits," we'd be like, "That's fine." There's a million other things to talk to Pete right. about. Yeah, 
I wasn't really going to dwell on that because I've read every interview about it, and I know it's old news. I was really just kind of saying, gee, what are all the things we know about right. Pete? I don't even know that I would have brought it. I mean, I might have brought it up, and he could have just said to me, hey, man, you know, it's all straightened out, and fuck you. Right, or a, I, I can't talk about it because no. it's still pending, right. well, and we would have gone on. How's Scott Greenstein doing? I haven't gone back there yet, but I heard that he's saying that you know that it was good radio. Yeah, yeah but but I, think way, it, but, I mean, that was way better than hearing Dolce but, but you and know Townsend what? doing acoustic won't be fooled again. But what happens is, you know, Scott <laughs> develops... <it's, laughs> First of all, we didn't know they were listening in. That's the yeah, other thing. Yeah, does that always happen? Uh, yeah, because no. we got to yeah. shut our mouth. No, yeah, because we're we on ISDN. Not. They have to hear, you know, they're setting levels over there. They're making sure they can hear. Listen. Hey, Ralph, you're on the air. Hey, now. Yeah, it, it's shocking he ran off. You calling him, uh, Robin calling him a child molesting fruit. <laughs> <laughs> did, did she say that? No. Never. Pretty much. No, she did. We talked about what happened and that we might ask about it. We never called him anything. Well, listen, does this guy need your shit? He's a billionaire. He's not going to sit there and take of that. Of course not going to run right out. But, but you know what? I, he, blame him. he could have just called up the people that booked it here and said, hey, you know what? I don't want to talk about that. And that would have been it. Why do you have to leave? Like he could. I, I understand it's upsetting, but he should have just Because he doesn't us. care. Obviously, Ralph's right. He doesn't have to do right. it. But I mean, Howard is a guy who deserves a little more respect in the sense that I think the cool move might have been if he heard it, go, look, I just heard what they were talking about. Please tell them not to bring it up. Right. And we would have complied. Artie's right. This is not the Billy and Bob show in yeah, Iowa. Yeah. This is Howard, for real. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's just, yeah, it's just too on. bad. The, guy, the guy's sitting there. He's, 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 How do we know he's in, sitting in there? We world, are talking in, to each other. In his world, he's ki king of everything. So he's mm. figuring you guys aren't going to start. Go down that road. But why would he figure that? I mean, you would think... Very like, fun. I even said to the people... Hold on a second, Ralph. I even said to this the people... This is a big event. Ralph. This is a big party. Shh. It's a big event. You Shut up. Or we'll go back to bed. I'm saying that even the people around here that booked it, I would imagine that if you think that Pete's going to be on the Howard Stern Show, they would have even thought... That might come up, and somebody would have said something. I, I got one thing to, in, in Howard's defense, and everybody's defense, actually. It's like, now, Pete is kind of a fan of the show. He's commented on the show at live performances in other venues. So, Ralph, it's not like he doesn't know what the Howard Stern right. show is all about. Yeah, so I, for I, Howard to, like, I'm you sure know, Pete, act like there's not a blue elephant in the center of the room I'm would sure, be ridiculous. I'm sure Pete's getting You'd up be on Howard's case sure if he Pete, didn't bring yeah, it up. Yeah, here's a funny thing. This is getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to listen to the show. This is Ralph. This is Ralph. He'd be bitching the fact that Howard didn't mention the Here's Ralph. Different scenario. We did the Pete Townsend interview, but he told us not to talk about that. Right. Pete Ralph calls up and goes, who the fuck is Pete Townsend telling Howard what to do? Howard, you're Howard. Fuck him. Don't have him on. Ralph could take any argument depending on what mood he's in. Mm. All right. <laughs> I don't know if that's completely true, but you no. might be right. How come Ralph can't walk away from the show? That's what you're saying. <laughs> you can't say no anything to make him. him walk out of the room. All right, Ralphie, thank you're you. You're stuck with me, sorry. Ralph, uh, by the way, good performance in the bitter half. Uh, happy yeah. to see you save the day and, and rescue me from being uh, choked to death by Beth O. That was funny. I didn't hear the whole thing. I just heard my part at the end there. It was nice. Yeah, you, 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 you woke up at the right time. I did. You timed it just right. All right, Ralphie, just thank right. you. That's good Ralphie stuff. Cakes, everyone. There's a great new song for those of you just tuning in over the Internet. There's a great new Ralphie song, Ralphie Cakes, that uh, is a big hit. Ralphie Cakes, you are a lazy homo, Ralphie Cakes. It's like you work in slow-mo, you're a bum. No job gets done, while people go in on their paycheck. You're at home just watching Star Trek, Ralphie Cakes. You've got disgusting berries all over your face. You'd rather catch than pitch, that's why you're Howard's bitch. And your name is Ralphie Cakes. By the way, how nice is it not breaking for commercials every three minutes? Oh, uh, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, welcome to all who are listening uh, over the Internet today for free. And, Just to um, mention, that interview would have been, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk to Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend, and then 20 minutes later, we would have had five minutes with them. Well, actually, uh, it worked out much better. We didn't have them at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, Brian. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write him a letter. <laughs> Brian, you're on the air. I'm not sorry to him. I'm sorry to you. Well, what are we going to do? You know what? It could have gone horribly wrong anyway. I'm sure I would have <laughs> fucked it up. I, Look, I think. I don't think he would have lasted five minutes. I don't think he'd have gotten through any interview. Doesn't sound like a guy with a sense of humor. Robin, Brian, you, sh Robin you should apologize to Scott Greenstein, who's right now checking for a, a, a strong beam in the ceiling <laughs> to the road. <laughs> Brian, you're on the air. Aside from Pete Townsend, the greatest shit was Fred arguing with Roger Daltrey. That was <laughs> <laughs> Now I know why Townsend has an attitude with him. 
You're the best, Fred. Dude. Thanks, dude. Yeah, you really were getting testy. Yeah. You know what? It's like I, I figured he actually had a sense of humor about it, so I could rib him. Yeah. There are no feds in it. And no feds. <laughs> uh, Pete Townsend is on. They the invented phone. English, and I can't Pete, say the word. Third. I'm glad you called in. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, Howard. Please <laughs> don't bring up those little blooming boys. Just let me play some rock and roll. Play something for us, Pete. Why should I care? Woo! Why should I care? <laughs> Any other songs you want? Do uh, Rain or Me. Okay, let me just switch over to the piano. <laughs> what was that? Hey, Roger. What's the piano? Only love can bring the rain that falls the day deep by the sky. Oh, that, that was the best oh, thing you've ever done. Hey, that was great. And we're going to listen to you on the Hood channel. I'd go see that show. Come on, sing along. Oh, Pete doing on, another one. Play us some rock and roll. Go ahead, Pete. Okay, okay. Huh. Yeah. Now you know why Roger sings. <laughs> Ready? Ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. From Soho down to Brighton, I must have played them all. And I ain't seen nothing like him in any amusement hall. That deaf, dumb, and black kid sure plays a mean pinball. <laughs> uh, enough from Pete. Uh, you know, you were right. It wasn't a good interview. <laughs> that was... Uh, I assume that was Sour Shoes. That was him at his No, that was Pete. That was Pete. That was you're, the real Pete. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Fooled you. Mutt, you're on the air. Hey, Mutt, you're on the air. <laughs> Dude, Sour Pete was awesome. <laughs> yeah, Sour Pete. Sour Pete. <laughs> I love it. Here. I love it. Here. Hey, by the way, everyone, this is Mutt, who now works with That's us, too. Funny. He's from the, he owns the website Stern Fan Network, and he hosts a show called the Super Fan Roundtable. And It'll be on tomorrow night at 7 on Howard 101. Yeah, sample that, by the way, for free tomorrow night. Mutt does a great show, and it's all super fans getting together and talking about the show and the stuff that's happening. Uh, hey, hey, hey now, Mutt. But, uh, you know, I was calling in to say, like, you know, when I first heard Pete wasn't going to make it, I thought, like, man, what a disaster. But Roger saved the day. It was a great interview. Roger's a cool guy. He has a sense of humor, and Pete probably would have just walked out anyway once I started the interview. Because, I don't know. I just, you know what's weird for me and awkward? Beth really what? has a relationship, a friendship with Pete, yeah. and Pete's uh, knows Pete's whole life, really. And uh, she used to hang out with Pete all the time. And I know one day I'm going to run into him, and he's going to just fucking curse me out. <laughs> it's just going to be awkward as all hell. Well, that's why I was apologizing to you. <laughs> I'm even thinking, like, i got to go home. And, and, and I know Beth's going to say me, had that interview with oh, Pete Townsend go, and I'm going to go, well, he walked... You know what? It. Just play her the Sour Pete. I'll play her Sour Pete. <laughs> I'm just gonna, you want to know something? I don't even want to explain. I'm just going to go, you know what? It was really good. Okay. That's all. But if you have to, you know, just say Robin ruined it. No. <laughs> you didn't know he was listening. You can't be even blamed. Hi, we got to get to the Townsend stuff because that, I think, is the most controversial thing. The question was, what set Pete Townsend off, Gary? Okay. Probably what set Pete off was bringing up the subject of the whole pedophile thing that he went through, even though it's been cleared of it, just I think bringing up the subject at all, and you have to uh, bring it back a little bit. You know, we're new at Sirius. Probably things weren't communicated correctly. The way this whole thing came down is the who are doing a channel here. Mm -hmm. So the you know the president of our company, Scott Greenstein, has become friendly with them, and he's the one who sort of coerced them into doing this. So, so it was a coercion thing. Well, yeah, was, yeah. No, no, I would it. say that. No, I would say that that. They were We've not looking to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, Robin, they probably were not looking to do this. I think that it was explained to them that this is a good thing all around, that Howard's going worldwide or a lot of people are going to be listening. Here's a great chance for you guys to promote the Who channel. Okay. And probably somewhere along the way, if there were parameters, they should have been told to me. But the, none right. were given to me. 
So we just did what we do. Now, let me ask you another thing, because that was something I brought up a few days ago. Did he agree to an interview, or was it just, I'm going to be there and I'll do these no, two songs? No, it was an interview and two songs. We okay. were definitely going to get to speak to him. And in fact, Roger wasn't coming. Roger's like, I sleep late. I'm not dealing with this shit. Mm -hmm. So that whole thing was engineered late last night that Roger was coming. Mm -hmm. he, otherwise, we'd have just been talking to... Mrs. Townsend. Right. <laughs> now, before any of this happened, Howard and you guys were having a discussion about Pete Townsend, what you know you were going to talk about, and then Robin threw this in. That's not it. <laughs> Try to. Is that a phony phone call? <laughs> yeah, all right. So, Pete Townsend, anything else? Well, the latest thing was, you know, like he got off of the child porn <laughs> app, <laughs> even though he had been downloading child pornography onto his computer. He claimed it was research, which unfortunately seems to be a claim a lot of pedophiles. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, hold on. Can I just say something? <laughs> that might have been Marty, Marty's, Marty <laughs> blamed this on me. Right. I hadn't said a fucking word. <laughs> your your uh, voice is not here. You brought it up in a way that's, that doesn't say anything. He's the one now, I realize. Yeah, that's how I was going to say. The biggest Who fan in the world. When, yeah. I, when I pulled one. that clip, I was like, okay, Robin took the hit. She said it was her problem. Right. She's the one who said it. And I heard that, and I was like, wait Whoa. a minute. Yeah, I didn't realize that we, that was our generation. kicked in. I'll have to take this shit. <laughs> but but so, so I guess, so in his world, Pete Townsend sitting in a studio in London and saying, I'm going to help promote Howard. Howard's going to help promote me. We'll we'll interview for a little bit, but probably just thinking like I'm not going to have to deal with this crap. So yeah, I, it probably should have been set up a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what should have been done. Well, yeah, my imagination should have said something to us. Yeah, but my imagination is when somebody says I'm going on right. to do promotion, they don't expect. In his world, I guess that there'll be a it, you know it's about the music. Right. It's not about him personally. Yeah, so it's sort of understood that stuff like that isn't going to come up. Well, I think that sometimes stars think that. Yeah, right. Okay. Listen. Yeah. If Scott, here's the deal. If Scott Muni were still that. alive, right, and Pete had a new record out. That he would go there, play the new single, and they would never talk about anything of any They'd interest. They only right. talk about right. music and what record. he was thinking and when he wrote fabulous. this or that. And I think that's mostly the kind of interviews he's used to. Right. But Fred, what did you just say? I mean, it's it's the Stern it's, Show, and you know Pete Howard knows. Stern. It's the and he knows the show, of like OJ coming on to do an interview on this show and not expecting anybody's going to ask him about like a couple of murders that happened, you know, in Brentwood. A no, few I years get back. I get. I know what I mean, he probably expected, I mean, he and I get what you're saying. And he has an awareness. I mean, Pete Townsend is a very intelligent man, and he knows how the business works. If he really thought that this was going to come up, and he didn't want it discussed, that should have been laid out. You I mean, also are not Scott, thinking of the Gary. friend factor, though. You know, sometimes these guys think they're going to get a break because, oh, you know, I, I know Beth right. or, you know, Howard's my buddy. And they think it's going to be a different environment for them, maybe, than somebody who just comes in off the street. Now, Roger Daltrey was standing by. Was he the surprise guest? How did Roger end up doing the interview? What, what happened was I t was told late last night that there was a good chance that Roger was coming. But I wasn't going to say anything about it on the air till I knew he was there because th there was a chance. So I found out that Pete left at about our time, about 20 to 10. And by quarter two, I found out that Roger was there. They must have missed each other by like a minute. Wow. Hey, and they didn't ride over in the same car? No. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. In the, long, in the long run, it's not like we blindsided him with like a little kid voice no. calling up to have phone no, sex. No, 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 no. Aren't you kind of glad that it did come up no. that way? I mean, I thought that here's what I am. I'm, I mean, not, you, I'm not glad that it happened the way it did. I admire the way that this show can take something that looks like it's going to shit and make it amazing radio. I think it's more interesting than what would have happened if Pete would have just been interviewed and he sang. And it went I, well. I, I, and it went I well but I still, I still would have liked it. I would rather have not. I would rather have had the other thing and no hard feelings. Well, a couple mm -hmm. people in studio said that interview would have gone a few minutes and, and he would have bailed the second that, that came yeah. up. You I see, mean, I, I, here's see, the deal. I mean, I have a question, too, and nobody's here to really answer it. But, you know, weren't they in the New York area recently? Yeah, no, they were up here like yeah, two weeks ago. I mean, ago. they were, you know, the Who channel. They could have come on the show at that point unless this was, you know, in the works. And they couldn't convince this. him. And couldn't, I mean, it would have been a whole lot better had he been here in right, person. Right, but, that, but that's that's sort of insignificant. They were here. I they mean, didn't do it for whatever that reason. Is a factor. And then I mean, they, you're and, hearing this stuff yeah, over but that's, a speaker. And it always sounds a lot worse when, unless you're like in the room. But face you can't to say they were here to do something completely different. They didn't end up doing our show, and then mm. they agreed to do it. So that was great. My feeling is he wouldn't have gotten through any interview. Well, I've seen I've him. I've seen him. Over. I've seen him interviewed a bunch of times, and he can be, um, 
you know, he might call it biting, but I call it sort of smarmy. But it's that sort of like I'm a rock star. Not not like he's a jerk, but I don't see him answering anything particular. He probably would have thrown his uh, I his think girlfriend out there. I love him, but I don't think he has a sense of humor. Hmm. See, and, and when I re- hear his songs and I read stuff that he writes, he does have a sense of humor. But when I see him, no, I think the guy who had a sense of humor was Keith Moon, and he's not. <laughs> <around anymore. laughs> yeah, Keith would have been Keith fine Moon with anything. Was out of his mind, he would have gotten everything about this. But show. maybe he's sitting there, he's listening to you guys talk, and he's like. I don't need this. And he, and he just, well, of that's he my point. It. I mean, he, he's got Nissan commercials now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> See, if, if, if it were Roger the other way around, Roger needs this. Right. Pete doesn't need this shit. Well, right. why do you think we were talking to Roger? <laughs> right. Johnny in Manhattan, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, Roger Daltrey totally saved the show today, man. And Baba Booey, you dropped the ball. That's your responsibility. You should know he didn't want to talk. To <laughs> didn't you call earlier? What's that? Didn't you call earlier? No, I didn't call earlier, but I'm echoing whoever called early and said the same thing. Because got millions of fans out there that blame you for what happened today. I so what should I have done? Should I have, ta- should I have tackled Artie while he was started to talk about it? Artie's not the executive producer of the show. Artie's going through a very rough time. He's going to, he's going to <laughs> so, so Gary's got to pull out a, a, a crystal ball and mind read it's what's funny. not That's and what stop. is appropriate. Johnny, r- Johnny, stop. he's neither funny or hey, Gary, a good actor. Johnny, the ro- tonight. Johnny, the Gary roast is tomorrow, man. Not today. <laughs> Save it for tomorrow. Call back. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody who did have an issue with Roger Dalton, however, was Mr. Fred Norris. There and you here's, go. here's a little sample of that conversation. Hmm. Number three, Teddy. Fred, why don't you know how to play these songs? I got news for you. He's bullshitting you. Those are the songs, Dalton. There's no thirds. There's no thirds <laughs> in it. There's no thirds. There's no thirds. Just sing. <laughs> no. no. Play it no with no third in it. No, no, no one. There's no thirds. You're busting my balls. What is third? T H I R D. Oh, stop it. We don't even know what third is. Do you know how to play those songs? Goddamn English. Are you playing those? I was playing the song. He's just being a dick about it. He doesn't want to sing. No, there's no thirds in it. He doesn't want to sing. It's not in a major key. Could you do it for the the tablet you're off the internet it says e <laughs> it's, it's, it's e with key, no dude. we'll take the third out of it take the third we have the internet here just sing over the third <laughs> fred just play it without the turds <laughs> or thirds or whatever they are someone's the being turds. a turd here and it ain't me all right <laughs> that was a comfortable little chat with roger i thought so i mean see that's how pete should deal with him for crying out loud he's got to be slapped around a little bit i love when fred hits that point well you know it's funny because people joke around the, the running joke is like what woke fred up yeah and the other the only other time i remember this was fred for some reason went like ape shit on david cassidy do you remember that David uh, no, Cassidy? actually, no. I didn't go eight. Yes, he, on did, he, we, he yeah. was on. He was on the satellite, uh-huh. and Fred just started like hammering away at him. I played it on a best of not that no, long wow, ago. Wow, I don't I remember. Swear that. It was. It was a lot like this. Like I you, don't remember. You said that. you thought he was on drugs, and it was really. Oh, funny. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now it's coming back to you. <laughs> I remember the thing that he seemed like he was on drugs, and, and he's like, "Who the hell is that guy?" And it's like it's Fred, and, but it was funny, like. That you pick Pete, uh, that you picked Roger to fight with. Yeah, no, why no, did you, you know do what that? it was? It, it, it was more about a thing. It was like a lot of artists come on the show and we want them to sing, and they always come up with an excuse. It's like, oh no, it's too early. Oh no, it's too late. Oh no, it's not my key. Oh no, I don't have a glass of water. Oh no, I don't have my favorite pillow. Oh no, I don't have my little Pooh Bear stuffed animal. What am I going to do? Sing the fucking song. Ah. <laughs> Is there uh, damn, you damn it, you're a performer. Be a today. professional. Is there any chance that nowhere in that recording studio was a guitar? No. Please. He's in a studio? It's yeah. like I always love these guys who just bullshit when they come in. And it's like, you know, it's like he was there to sing with Pete. Well, he wasn't. He, was, he wasn't there to sing with Pete. Well, That's the whole he thing. Pete was going to sing. He wouldn't even want to be there. <laughs> Well, then, but did you think he was going to sing with you? I me? wasn't sure what was going to go on. Mm. I really didn't know. Like yeah. I got the call last night that Roger's but coming. It's I wasn't always sure the what... most frustrating thing in the world. When well, I mean, Gary, you've been a witness. Oh to that. yeah. How many times we've done like you know like those those Grammy shows and this show and that show? We've got the you know the instruments. We've got the drums. We've got the guitar. We've got you know everything's going to sound good. Just open your mouth and sing a couple of words. Yeah, but it's, see, not like, it's not like he's singing the song on tour every right. night. For it's the like last nobody's. This is not going to make or break his career. I mean. Everybody knows Roger Daltrey can sing. He's been doing it, you know, since 1966. They know he's a genius. <laughs> but artists get into this whole weird thing where, like, I'm not going to be your monkey. I'm not going to sing yeah, your fucking like, hit songs. It's, it's, it's weird. Really is. It's, it's I like, mean, I've had some of the biggest fights I've had with musicians over the years have been song selections. Well, the look on the musician's face when you say, come on. Right. I remember Bon Jovi walking into the room and that birthday party right. where we had the reunion. And then it was like, you know, this clamoring from the audience for them to get up and join our band, right. our all-star band. The look on John's face oh, it was, terrible. was just like, oh, you're killing me. Now, I can't figure out, is it uncomfortable for them, 
Or I remember reading a story about Mickey Mantle that, like, whenever you gave him a ball, if he signed it, he took a two dollar ball and made it a hundred dollar ball. Oh, right. Like, are they bummed out that they're giving something no, away? I, for I, free? I, I think no. it really comes down. To, they want to sound their best, right? Okay. You know, it it really comes down to that. It's like because there are a lot of times you walk into a live situation, like to take you know Bon Jovi sign on that. I mean, he is a professional. You know, it's like whether or not you love his music, he's a professional. He sings well and he always gives it a hundred percent. So when he steps on stage. They don't know whether the sound system is good. They right. don't know if the band is any good. And if they're playing badly or the sound system is badly and he can't hear himself, nobody's going to say, geez, it's a bad sound system. And he was, or the, or the he's band is going to say, he sucks. Boy, right. and he was, so, he was yeah. so, you know, and, and it's funny because we talked about this when we were doing the Friday show. He remember, I think he was still mad at us from when he came to Club Benet and, and he sang Runaway on stage right. with Pig Vomit. It sounded like shit. And I remember for real. One of the terms of the re, uh, reuniting was to not play that anymore, ever again. Oh, he, you're yeah, kidding! He, yeah, I didn't just, know that. Never again. Could, it was like, please, it was like, could you was please vomit. not play that. But I don't blame him because he said we only played it because he sounded horrible. Right, we were mad at him. right. He, he sounded a lot like uh, you know in Reiki Igle- in Reiki Iglesias Center. Uh, oh, is that, that right? I, I didn't remember it was being that bad. But, but Freddie, <laughs> do you think it's almost like the comedian equivalent of walking up to a comedian and say, "Okay, now be funny," like walk Probably. up to a guy and just say, Probably. "Sing." But there it's like, it's like when porn stars come in the studio, they right. won't get topless. I, there you I go. love it's like, that. W- yeah. what, what's going on? Oh, that's always great too. Or like you know the Playboy girls and say, like, "Oh no, it's like go to my website." It's like, no, no, we don't have to go to the website. You're here, right? <laughs> and someone threw out the excuse, "Oh, it's early in the morning," and then it's like, "No, it's it's in the afternoon." Actually, they're <laughs> over like, in England. It's like three going in, to, it was it's, three in the afternoon there. It's like yeah. going to a restaurant and saying, "Like you know, I want to eat now." No, 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 go to Fresh Direct and order offline. But when you hear someone like I've been listening to a lot of the musical performances and like, come back to us, Gary. No, you know, I, girls just walk you know, by. I, you know, who I thought that was maybe I'm crazy. I thought that was Ashley Simpson. Really? I, but, I, mean, I, be... I don't think it was. Okay. But um, <laughs> what I was going to say, and then you hear, like, I just listened to Stevie Wonder when he was on. And just uh, to him to sit oh, down and, and just that was That was a performance and a half. You've got a lot of people that come through the doors on the show. And I've spoken to Gary about that, where there's some people you go, like, how the hell are they in the music business? Right. And you got a guy like that who sits down but, with him and a piano, and that's it. And he just moves you to tears. There's two things about that, though. In all fairness, A... We agreed with Stevie in advance that he was going to do that. Mm-hmm. And B, he can do that. He knows he can do that. Or right. otherwise, right, but other agree. people are making tons of money in the well, music right. business. And, and I've said this all, I've said this to John when we were playing on the Friday show, we were playing all the music. I have, if you can sound good on our show at 7.30 in the morning, you are really fucking good. Yeah. And, and that's, I, that's I a tell you, that was one of the, the things too that, that really kind of like, before he came on the show and was doing things acoustically with Richie, is Bon Jovi. I was kind of like, all right, well, he's kind of a poppy guy. And he came in, and he sang with Richie, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, he's a this good guy singer. Can singer. Sing. And I, I remember we um we had Sting on the show once, and we did that thing exactly with Fred Sutton. Right. Where uh, we, like, jam, crowbarred yeah. a, a guitar in his hand. He, and he wasn't half as troublesome as, no, as, as, but, uh, as but Dolphrey. But he did not sound good. He couldn't hit the note on Roxanne, and he was sort of irritated by it. Then, like two years later, he was in Japan and he did the ISDN thing, and he sounded great. Some people maybe just need to get ready vocally. Well, there is a thing about sure. being prepared to sing because a music, you know, a guitarist just picks up his guitar and he can tune it. Right. Mm. A, your body is your instrument right. when you're the singer. Well,